Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, mighty God. We bless you, Jesus. We're going to sing that song again without the music. Come on, open your mouth. Are you sure he's your God? Establish us in his presence in Jesus' name. Uh, now is a session for announcement. Uh, if you're there on Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, uh, please use the handle there to uh, identify yourself by typing in your name, the location you're joining us from so that the church can reach out to you and uh, welcome you into the food. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, in a miss, if uh, there's anyone joining us for the first time, fellowshipping with us for the first time, you're welcome to our guest. Uh, please kindly raise up your hand. And uh, if you may, you can stand up as well so we can all rejoice with you and welcome you to our presence today. If you're there, in the sanctuary. Okay. No one. Pray the Lord will bring uh, more souls into our midst in Jesus' name. Uh, so before I go into the special announcement for today, I will want to say the Bible reading for this morning, Revelation 22 and Matthew uh, 1. Uh, get the Bible reading ready. Why the media present the announcement to us? Welcome to church. We are so glad to have you here this morning. This is Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. There will be many opportunities to fellowship with us during the week, so please listen closely to the following announcements. On Sundays, we begin with intercessive prayers at 8.30 a.m. and service start at 9 a.m. Later on Sunday evenings, we meet in smaller units for house caring fellowship. Make sure to get connected to your fellowship unit before the end of today's service. We believe the Holy Bible is the true word of God. That is why we meet every Monday at 6.20 p.m. as our founder, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi takes us through the scriptures. Join us this Monday as we study the word together. If you're a senior citizen, I invite you to come join us on Wednesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. for an evening with Jesus. During this time, we encourage ourselves in the Lord as we worship with one another. Seniors, don't miss this time of fellowship. All children are welcome to join the kids' Bible discussion every Thursday at 6 p.m. This is a fun time where we learn about Jesus, His Word, and how we can live for Him. Join us this Thursday. I hope to see you there. Youths, get excited for your weekly fellowship every Thursday at 7 p.m. It's a time for us to study God's Word together so that we can be all that He has called us to be. What a great place to be. You can't miss it for anything. Fridays are a time for revival service where we hope to be encouraged and strengthened as we continue to seek the Lord. Join us this Friday at 6.20 p.m. for a time of seeking the Lord. 
Every third Friday is our community fellowship. Make sure to be part of this avenue for soul winning and let's impart our word for the Lord. Offering time, blessing time. Blessing time, offering time. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 tells us to honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruit of our increase. If you brought tithes and offerings, please bring them out now. Let's pray on the offering. Father Lord, we thank you, bless your name, for this uh, offering that we have brought to your presence. We to use it to your glory in Jesus' name. I pray you bless us in return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have uh, some special announcement this morning. Um, the first will be uh, GCK coming up this week, uh, July 25 to July 28th, please. I'm sorry, 30th. Uh, please let's note that in our calendar and uh, uh, the time. We know it's evening time, so let's endeavor to join. Um, also, our convention coming up in October. October 17 to 28. Uh, please, we are all encouraged to make the reservation for the hostel if you're going to use the hostel. And I believe the, the link for the hostel is on the church WhatsApp group. And also, if you, are, you, know, you want to use the hotel, you have to reach out to Abra Obina, Robina Hubbard, uh, so you can have, uh, I mean, give them your um, what you want you know the number of rooms and uh, the name can be registered for the hotel uh, also for our wedding coming up in uh, August our brethren from uh, uh, New Jersey please let's support them in prayer in kindness in whatever we have and I pray the Lord we establish their home in Jesus name uh, um, also there's gonna be a health uh, seminar this morning, uh, and he it will be uh, taken by Dr. Abiodun, and please let's uh, look forward to that, and uh, I believe that we'll, uh, we're going to be educated on how we can all take care of our health, and the Lord will keep us healthy in Jesus' name. Uh, so now let's go into the Bible reading. The first is Revelation 22, and the second will be Matthew 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. 
And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things, and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, has sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. So, come Lord Jesus. You will go away from your mommy and your dad. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking to you. I'm trying to do something. You're listening to the audio production of the KJV Listener's Audio New Testament, published by Thomas Nelson. Spread God, you start giving on the trash. You spread it on it. You can't put it inside the line of Chapter 1. What do you know about this? Is that? The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Pharis and Zerah of Thamar. Pharis begat Esram, and Esram begat Aram, and Aram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nasan, and Nasan begat Salmon, and Salmon begat. Bo Published by Thomas Nelson. Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren, and Judas begat Pharis and Zerah of Thamar. And Pharis begat Esram, and Esram begat Aram, and Aram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nasan, and Nasan begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias, and Solomon begat Reboam. 
And Reboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat Josaphat, and Josaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, and Ozias begat Jotham, and Jotham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias, and Ezekias begat Manassas, and Manassas begat Amon, and Amon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiud, and Abiud begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliud. And Eliud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathan, and Mathan begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So, all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are fourteen generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are fourteen generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church, and welcome to our Sunday service. Shall we have a word of prayer? Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you for life. Thank you, the giver of life. Thank you for counting us among the living. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Lord, as we continue the service, go with us in Jesus' name. Bless each and every one of us, and at the end of it all, take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, I want to use this uh, opportunity to appreciate the leadership of the church, uh, resident pastor, Pastor Charles, and by station to uh, our regional overseer for this opportunity. Thank you. We pray the Lord we keep you to the very end in Jesus' name. 
now to the business of the day. <laughs> Incorporating faith and awareness, a Christian perspective, that is. In the few minutes we'll be looking at, is God interested in our head? Or is it just about our spiritual well-being? So what is health? I'm sure everybody is familiar with this definition of health. According to the WHO, he said, health is a state of complete physical, mental. I will be having the spiritual because of who we are and the social well-being and not just the mere absence of uh, disease or infirmity. That for the fact that you don't have any pain, doesn't mean you are whole. Are you spiritually um, fit? Mentally, are you okay? Socially and uh, emotionally, are you stable? So when you talk about the physical health there, that's referring to our body. And then by extension, the mental health is talking about our soul. Uh, the, the part of man, as in, we are, according to First Thessalonians 5, 23, the Bible tells us that we are what? We are created with three different parts. Three different parts. He said that the God of peace sanctify you only. That is, I pray God that your whole spirit, it went for that to break down the holy. That is, your spirit, your body, and your soul be preserved blamelessly. Be preserved blamelessly. That it doesn't want anything to happen to you spiritually physically, mentally, and all other areas of our life. He wants us to be what? To be whole. So our body, let's quickly look at this um, dramatical representation of the different parts of man. Let's start from the body. Our body, that is the physiological. That's what um, has our what? The blood, the water, the bone. So that is the word consciousness. The body is the one that relates to the environment. It's your body that will react when it is hot, when it is cold. When you have uh, physical injury, it's your body that will react to that. And then our soul, that is psychological. Our self word, consciousness. The soul can also be referred to as your mind, your emotions, your will. And it's that aspect of us that relates to other. And then to the spirit, that's our spiritual uh, being God consciousness. That is our conscience. Is the one we commune with uh, with God. Is the one that relates to God. So, what is the interaction within uh, these three different parts of the body? The body houses both the soul and the spirit. That is, we are the carrier of what of God's spirit. Your body is the carrier of God's spirit, and so. Imagine when the body dies, what happened to the soul and the spirit? Back to God. Back to God. Thank you. So, emphasizing the importance of self-care. We have to take care of our body for us to carry out the word of God effectively, efficiently. A dead body, the spirit of God, <laughs> although there is nothing beyond uh, God to do. So, very important is self-care. God wants us to be healthy. We want us to be physically, spiritually, as in mentally fit. Next slide, please. So let's look at some of the biblical uh, perspective about the caring for our body, as in what does the Bible say? In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20, the Bible says we are what? We had the temple of God, that the spirit of God dwells in us. We are the house of the spirit of God. Let's compare our body to the physical house we live in. We know the efforts that we put into making our house habitable, conducive, inviting. That same effort should also be geared towards what? Towards maintaining our body physically. We should be what? Healthy physically. Um, let's look at um, Elijah as a case study in the book of First Corinthians 19, 1 to 21. Um, after Elijah has called the first prophet, and Jezebel said he was going to make his life as one of them, he ran for his dear life. 
and his old God is no longer better than his, uh, his father's, and that it should be what? It should be taken. And God understood that what? Elijah was tired. He was exhausted. He needed to be refreshed. You know what have followed after? He was fed twice. And after that, he went in that strength, that might, for 40 days and 40 nights. So as a Christian, you can't be exhausted. You need to do what? To be refreshed. And after that, God, that was, with that strength, he was able to anoint three different people. Je, um, Azra, Jehu, and who? Elisha, to take over. Because God knew he was what? Physically exhausted. And the spirit needs to be wooed to Elisha. The next, um, so let's look at, um, that's the Old Testament. Then the, sec, then the New Testament, talking about Epaphroditus. Yeah, this is Paul writing to the Philippians in Philippians 2, 25 to 30. 27 said, he was sick near unto death. Who? Epaphroditus. Why? Because of the work of Christ. He was busy with the word of God without taking care of his body. Paul went further in 28 and said, I sent him therefore the more careful. We need to be careful. We need to do what? To take care of ourselves. Today, um, evangelism, tomorrow, there is tomorrow that you are actively working for. It is good, but you need to take a moment to also do what? To refresh. We are not the spirit. We are the carrier of the spirit. So you need to maintain the, the case to continue to carry the words, the content. So let's look at a few things that we can do to be healthy physically. Um, the first thing is eating right. That's the eating uh, nutritious food. Now, in Genesis 129, and God said, behold, I've given you every herb, be every seed, which is upon the face of all the heads, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree you didn't see. So you, they shall be for meat. Some uh, verses we say, uh, version we say, therefore what? For our healing. This verse underscores the significance of consuming natural plant-based foods, aligning with what? With God's initial plan for nourishment in creation. So a diet that includes fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and seed remains foundational to health and wellness. Being full of protective antioxidant fiber essential uh, nutrients. Fruits and vegetables. Another, um, that's the, the Old Testament. Let's look at what happened to Daniel. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 12, he told the, you know, he said, please, just give us pulse to eat. That is vegetable. And then try us after 10 days. And what happened after 10 days? Their appearance were far better than those that were eating the delicacies of this world. You might wonder why vegetable, why fruit? Let's look at, um, okay, before that, let's look at this earthy plate. Just um, your daily intake. Don't, let's just put as, okay, now I'm eating my breakfast. These days I should divide it. Let's just look at that, what I'm taking in a whole day. Ensure that half of what you are taking the whole day is what? Is fruits and vegetable. The other half divided into, um, into two, and then let the another half be for grain, and the other for healthy protein. Why are we, why the emphasis on fruits and vegetables? Let's look at uh, the next slide. The different, um, how long it takes for us to digest different food. We are first. Why, why fruit? Why vegetable? The average um, time for to digest your vegetable and the fruit is what? About 20 to 40 minutes. The body is done doing the work of um, digesting fruits and vegetables. So if you go further down, you can see that by the time you get to pork, your beef, your body needs about four to five hours to digest it. Your body needs about four to five hours to do what? To digest it. 
What about water? Water is not on the list. Water is immediately. If you are taking it on an empty uh, stomach, your water is what? Immediately absorbed. Immediately. Water is absorbed immediately. Your body doesn't really uh, has to, have to like stress itself to really take up the water. And then another thing that, can, <laughs> that is easily absorbed on your empty stomach is what? Can anybody just uh, guess or something that you take? on an empty stomach, and then your body absorbs immediately. Can anybody guess? Hmm? No, juice takes some about 10, 20 minutes. <laughs> no, I've mentioned water, apart from water. No, alcohol. Yeah, on an empty stomach, your body absorbs immediately. So you can imagine what that does to your body. Alcohol. Yeah, your body it wants to take it on an empty stomach. It is absorbed immediately. Just exactly like water. So you can imagine eating uh, fruits and vegetables. Your body is done within 20 to 40 minutes. And then your, our carbide, our grains, one hour, one to two hours, which is still okay. But take uh, our... Red meat and all that, four to five hours. Some food can take more than that, you know. And this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this um, average um, time for digestion depends on, uh, it's individualized, as in you can't compare the digestion in children to we the adults or to the adults to the elderly. So it might take longer. And then um, you can't compare somebody that is healthy to somebody that is on the sick bed. The, digest, the rate of digestion does what varies. So imagine taking um, a whole bowl of, um, how will I put it now? Some grains, let's put it together, and then pork around 10 p.m. at night. And then in the next 30 minutes, you are off to bed. You think you are sleeping, your body is busy working for the next four to five hours. And by the time you wake up by 3, 4, 8, 5 a.m., you are ready to take another thing. So. Unlike when you take fruit and vegetable, at, uh, even if you take it by 10, fruit and vegetable, 10.30, you are okay, 11, you are okay, and then you are good to go to bed. So your body does, um, a li- as other goes a little stress, digesting fruits and vegetables. So that's why the emphasis is just fruits and vegetable. Praise the Lord. All right, so in your eating, just ensure that you balance the next slide. Just ensure that you balance uh, your intake. Ensure that you emphasize on the fruits and the vegetable, the whole grains, the uh, any source of proteins, and then your liquid oil. And then minimize the intake of your beverages, your food that is added with sugar, ultra processed foods, the processed meats, the alcoholic beverage, and then the tropical uh, oils. Uh, the tropical oils are oils that we extract from the fruit of, um, from the seed and the fruit of plants. These oils are solid at room temperature. So they are rich in what? Saturated fatty acid, which is the, um, the uh, let me just put it in code, the bad cholesterol in code that you don't want to have an excess in your body. So I know there is always a trend about diet these days. Today is um, avocado oil. Next tomorrow, let's try um, coconut oil. That's what is, olive oil is the best. This. Please, any oil, just look through the nutritional facts. Thank God is always written on it. Anything that is high in saturated fat is not too good for our body. Try to look for something that is rich in unsaturated, especially the canola oil is avoidable. So for a healthy body weight, you want to match your intake to your what? To your expenditure. Limit consumption of food that are rich in what? Calorie. And those that have what? High content of sugar. I would like to say that our body, you know, we are what we eat. So to maintain our body weight, you need to balance your intake to your what? To your expenditure. 
your weight is a matter, is more of your diet than your exercise. You know, we usually say, oh, our bone is, our bone is. It's not always easy. It is easier said than done. So let's look at it as like a question of 80%, 20%. Let diet play 80% in your what? in the maintenance of your weight. Pay more attention to what you eat. If you really want to maintain your weight or want to lose weight, pay attention to what you eat, and then the exercise will take care of the 20%. So the second thing we can do to be healthy is exercise. So what is exercise? Any movement that makes your muscle to work or, and then requires you to burn calories. The excess of it is for you, for your body to be what? To be in continuous motion, not stiff, and then be able to burn calories. Being active has been shown to have many health benefits, both physically, mentally. And even the Bible says on the first Timothy 4 here, it says, for bodily exercise profits a little. That was Paul trying to compare spiritual exercise to physical exercise. So that means what? Your physical exercise is still what? It's still profitable. And then exercise. For our exercise to be beneficial, it, was, it has to be regular. So what is regular exercise? Can be defined as a consistent. It has to be consistent and it has to be planned. Activity that is performed with the intention of improving or maintaining your overall health and fitness. So what is the recommendation? It is 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity or 75 minutes of vigorously intensity activity per week for an adult. So it's gonna come down to like 30 to 40, uh, five minutes a day for three to five days. So some people say, ah, I'm at work. I, um, I go to the, uh, what's it called? I take the, uh, the stairs. Um, uh, what's it called? I take this there like two, but are you doing it consistently for 30, 45 minutes? That is when you can say, I, I work a lot. Ah, I'm always on my feet at work. I do this at work. And is it consistent for that 30 to 45 minutes? That's when you can say, okay, it is uh, exercise. So let's look at different exercise and the calorie we, um, the calorie expenditure. So for working, 198 calorie per hour. That's what you burn by walking. By jogging, that is 654 calorie per hour. Swimming, you can say different. So you can engage in different exercise as you wish. So even if it is ordinary walking, you are still losing some calorie. Cautions before exercising. This is very important, please. Uh, ensure that you exercise according to your physical ability. Don't compare yourself to anybody. Let me put it that way. Don't compare yourself to, body, that, um, to a marathon runner, no. Or to a weightlifter, no. That person was uh, started gradually and then to reach that uh, particular um, point. So please, don't compare yourself. Exercise your physical ability. Warm up. When you want to start, Warm up, spend about five to 10 minutes to do uh, maybe a form of stretching, a little walk, or a lighter version of the exercise that you want to engage in. Don't just wake up from your bed and then start running. Then dress appropriately, please. Especially this, um, during this summer, wear comfortable clothing that will allow you to what? To lose it, to exchange the heat with the environment, to avoid heat exhaustion. And then hydrate. Ensure you drink enough water before, during, and after exercise and then after exercising slow down decrease the intensity of your movement that is we know you are going to stop this exercise in the next 10 minutes okay i'm running i'm going to stop in the next 10 minutes i'll slow down to walk to jogging then to walking before i come to the what to the end so you don't just stop abruptly when you are exercising another important thing is please can you do regular days of exercise that's why they said three to five days, not seven days a week. And to rest when you are tired. And then very importantly, please, stop if you feel pain. It is normal for you to feel some discomfort. At least your muscles are stretching, so they may give you some discomfort, but pain is not expected. 
if it's a sharp pain or an increasing pain, please stop and do what? And contact your healthcare provider. You should also stop if you feel dizzy, if you feel nauseated, or you are out of breath. But benefit from exercise requires what? Discipline and consistency. Yeah, the next thing we can do about our health is rest. Um, on, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, the Bible says that on the seventh day, God rested from all his, all his work. Have you ever wondered why God had to rest on the seventh day? He was probably tired. Was God tired? He's the Almighty. He cannot be tired. Even if he was tired, then at least he wouldn't have been tired for at least once since the creation of, of the head. No, God was not tired. He was just trying to establish something for us to follow, which I call the law of what? The law of rest. You have to find what? Time to rest. So what is rest? It's not only when you sleep that you are resting. There are other things that you can do, uh, like take a break from work or other obligations. Just like today, I want to rest. I'm not going to work. Today, I'm not going to finish all my house chores, especially our sisters who want to do everything. Go outside and enjoy nature as part of resting. Take a good book to read. Do something creative and then connecting with God. So these are the examples of way we can what, uh, take some rest. Now, the, the next thing is mental and emotional health. First Peter 5, 7 and Philippians 4, 6 to 7. These are all the very verses that tells us that God is interested in our what? In our mental being, in our social well-being, in our emotional and mental well-being. I like this verse, verse um, Philippians 4, uh, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry, I skipped this slide. <laughs> it's okay. Let's go back to that slide, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, mental and emotional health. Just to emphasize the prevalence of mental health in, um, in our environment. In 2021, it's about 50 7.8 million, that's about 22.8 um, percentage of the po American population as what? Suffer from mental health. Any mental health, that a a means any. Any mental health, mental could be a, um, any or serious mental health, a different type of mental health, but any mental health, 22.8 percent of um, US adults suffers from it, and the prevalence is higher in female than what? Than males, and then the young adults are also more predisposed to mental health. Uh, Matthew 6, 27 to 29, a verse telling us about that God is threatened in us being mentally what? Fit. He said, who among you by worry can hide a single heart? I said, the Bible is too generous with a single heart because you can't even hide the second to your life. You cannot. Once it is once it's over, it is over. So by being worried, we can do little or nothing. Don't let me say you cannot do anything. You can do little or nothing. Who has worried help? Worry has not helped any, uh, anyone. So when you want to think about the things of the world, the, 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 the worries, the war, the earthquake, so many things that is happening around us, just read Philippians 4 8. Does it align with it? Is it true? Is it honorable? Is it pure? Is it commendable? Is it anything worthy of praise? If it is not, please. Bring yourself back to, to reality. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Ah, okay, social awareness now. We are social beings. And what is the meaning of that? We cannot live in isolation. We cannot live alone. God did not make us that way. We need each other to fulfill our needs. We need each other to express our thoughts and, and our feelings. In Genesis 126, what is the first um, reason for making man? It's for fellowship. And then Genesis 2 tells us that it's not good for man. It's not good for any woman, man or woman, to be what? To be alone. And Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12 tells us the importance of being um, two or three. And then uh, Paul tells us in Hebrews 10, 25, he said, we should not neglect the gathering of who? Of the children of God. We need one another. We are what? We are social uh, beings. So social awareness refers to relationship we have with one another, how we interact with others. 
It also talks about relationship. Our relationship can offer support during difficult times. The Bible says, Woe to him that is alone when, uh, uh, when either adversity or calamity comes. In one, if you are two, one can help the other when he's down. But who's going to leave that one alone if he's alone? So that is the essence. We are social beings. We are social human beings. We need to relate with one another. I will say one of the causes of um, um, uh, mental issue, as in the, uh, the burden we have in the developed world, is because of loneliness. It's because of loneliness. You, have, you live alone, no one to talk to, no one to, uh, to uh, like share your thoughts, your mind with, and then you carry, you bottle the whole thing here. One day you are going to explode. When you continue to bottle up your emotion, you are going to explode one day. And then another very important about social well-being and emotional being is, I would say some people would say crying. Crying is not, a, is not uh, a sign of weakness, please. Let's get it right. So, w- w- crying, I, would, I usually say it, if you need to cry, cry. I tell some of my friends, okay, if you want to cry, you know I will tell you not to stop crying. Cry, because it lets out your emotion. You'll be able to like, okay, then you come back to yourself, and then let's face reality. But not crying, but with Rabbi, especially men, don't have to bottle up. Please express your emotion. God help us in Jesus' name. So social awareness involves building a healthy relationship, nurturing it, supportive relationship, as well as fostering a genuine connection with those around us. So, in conclusion, for us to be whole as a believer, we must not only focus on the spiritual aspects of our lives, but the physical, the mental, the social well-being of what utmost uh, importance. Very, very important, please. We are not the Holy Spirit. You were first human before you became born again. Please take care of your body. You are not the spirit, but the carrier. And then you cannot go wrong by eating right and exercising. Ensure that you are mentally and emotionally fit. Always make out time for rest. Please and please. I can't overemphasize this, please. Make time out to rest. If you don't, you know the body? It adapts. It's going, <laughs> it will force itself into a rest mode if you don't give it rest. And then finally, moderation in everything, in what you eat, in your exercising, whatever you do. Moderation. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 5, it says, let your moderation be made known unto all men. The kingdom of God is at rest. Thank you and God bless. So, um, if you have any question, please. Once again, for the for the presentation, uh, I would I have a couple of questions. So maybe the first one, if you don't mind, you could just go over the the feeding times, like we discussed on Thursday, for the benefit of the others. I know the breakfast, lunch, and supper times, like we discussed on Friday. Sorry, and then the second one is since we are seeing a very good advantage of fruits and vegetables. Is there a downside to those who just adopt a vegetarian diet? Is, are there any disadvantages to that? And then the third one will be, um, is there any link? Uh, sometimes we hear people say that the, the structure of their body is linked to some kind of DNA or family line, like we are all maybe chubby in our family or we are all slim in our family. But you have said that these things are related to our food. So is, does that exist where somebody eats a lot, a lot, but you see he's not going anywhere, while maybe other people are eating a little, and because of their family uh, DNA or something, then they have this body mass. Thank you. Right. Um, 
Excuse me, brother, please. You will help me with the first and the second question. I didn't okay. really hear what you were saying, but I got the last question. Okay. So the first one I was saying, if you could just go over the feeding times like we discussed on Friday for the benefit of the others. Okay. And then secondly, since we see that fruits and vegetables have a lot of benefits, is there any downside to people who just adopt a vegetarian diet? Is, are there any disadvantages to that? Like they just live on fruits and vegetables and okay. they avoid meats and all the other heavy things. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for the question. Uh, let me start from, shall I start from the last one or the first? Anyone? Okay. Uh, the first question. Okay. On Friday, we talked about, and uh, we said we have to have breakfast, lunch, is that? Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and uh, dinner. I think that comes from the Western world. There is no place where you have to eat three times a day. I would say eat according to your words, energy expenditure. Uh, calorie intake or demand um, varies, which depends on well, our gender. Are you a male or female? Secondly, it depends on what? Our activity. It depends on our age. You can compare what the youth we eat to what grandma we eat. No. <laughs> so it depends on the, your physical what? Activity too. So if you are the one that is physically active, then you can go on and eat. You know you are going to burn it. But if you are the executive type that sits at the system all the day, at your desk, all like eight hours, nine hours, then please, you limit what you take. Because most of those things you take are just, your body just deposited them as fat into your belly, as a different part of your body. So there's no place where you must have breakfast, lunch. No, no, no law says that. Eat when you need to eat. And eat according to your what? Energy expenditure. If you are going to, you are the active person, you can't compare, um, I would say, is it, um, is it a police officer now? That I, think, I know they stand most of the time, but somebody that is, Real physically active to you that you sit at your, uh, your computer throughout the day? No. And then the second question is, um, I pray I remember. <laughs> oh, vegetarian diet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know, you know, train, 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 train. We're always on train. Different train, different things, train, and at different time. Vegetarian, yes. That's a downside to it. Uh, which is lack of some vitamins. There's some vitamins that you can only get in, in meat, as in, in proteins, like, um, like from your fish and all that. So what we do, what we encourage people that are vegetarian is to take supplements. It takes um, vitamin D, um, calcium, and um, vitamin D, calcium, and what is? Vitamin D, calcium, high iron, so yes. Those are things that you can't get from your vegetarian. Vitamin B, Oh, follow Cassie. No, you have enough of that in your, in your vegetable. But the things that is not present, like you can't get calcium from your vegetable. So we encourage them to take what? To take calcium supplements, iron supplements, zinc, things that cannot get. Just to balance what, what they are, are missing out by living on vegetables. And then the third question, yeah, the place of genetics. Very, very important. Thank you for that question. Um, that's the place of genetics. That's a place for the environment. It's an interaction. Who you are is a matter of interaction of your genetics, your genetically makeup, and your physical environment. For example, if you are genetically made to be, um, how will I put it? Is it tall or fat? <laughs> then you have to more, work more on what? The physical things, the uh, things in the environment. We call them modifiable factors. The things that you cannot modify, you can't modify that you are genetically made to be big. And you, can, you get what I'm trying to say, but you can modify what you take. So you balance it that way. You do more work on your words, on the things that you have control over. I can modify the amount of food, even though I'm born to be big. I can still modify the amount of words, my intake. So it's a matter of genetics and physical. So the things you have control over, you control it. Any other question? My question is on medication and uh, eating. Sometimes you have your medication take after meal or take before meal. 
and you don't want to go on eating the whole day. So how do you balance it up? And uh, my second question is, we are told that the older you are, the lesser you eat. Yes, sometimes you don't want to eat. Sometimes you want to eat. Sometimes you want to eat, you are not eating because you are getting older. So can I know what goes on there? Why elderly people cannot eat as much as they want to eat? That's my question. Thank you, Ma. <laughs> Let me start from the last question. <laughs> you know, um, as we age, although we are looking it physically, our uh, internal organs are also getting worse. Age, you're also aging. So you can't compare the way your body, your digestive system, very active. Do you know a newborn um, babe, do you know how many times they eat? Like some people, they say we feed them every two, two hours, every three hours. You dare not do that now. <laughs> you can't, yeah, because what? That system is still very strong, healthy, able to, as in, combat any um, stress. But you, at 70, your digestive system has been working for 70 years. How many number of days is that? Ah, so, <laughs> so <laughs> it needs to, you need to give your body time to digest. That's what I was saying that, although in a normal adult, your pork can digest four to five hours. But in an elderly person like you, ma, it might take six, seven, eight hours for you to digest because your body is processing it, what? Slowly. So that is, it. <laughs> and then um, medication, yes. Why we say some medication before food, some medication with food, some medication after food? It's just because of the absorption. When you take medication, you want you to get as um, a reasonable amount for it to be effective in your body. And then we call something drug interaction. So also is food interaction. So your, you know, some medication we ask you, don't take it together. You have to like give some hours because they're going to interact with one another. Is that one will prevent one from getting absorbed or the other one will increase the activity of the other. So before food, because food is going to reduce the absorption of that uh, medication. That's why you are asked to take it before me. And then the one we are asked to take with me, like for our, um, our end states, the managers, because they increase your gas restriction of acid, so you have to take it with me. And then some food, some medications after me. It's just because of the interaction. They just want you to get the maximum benefit from that medication. Food causes a bloating of stomach. Is that true? So, uh, some fruit does. Like which ones? Um, if I can, bloating. I know some fruit does, but I can't remember now okay. from fruit does, yes. So that's one thing about fruit too. That's why I say moderation. You can't afford to put banana and watermelon together at the same time. Yes, that's something that you should not combine together because you want to eat fruit, then package and package. Then by the time, I think some of them produces more um, gas. That's why it's going to lead to bloating of the stomach. So I can't really remember some of the fruit now that can lead. If anybody remembers, I don't know. Some of the fruits that can cause, uh, I know they increase the production of acid. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, gas rather, H2S or something. That's what's going to be responsible for the bloating. But one thing about fruit, you see, one thing about anything we eat, please. If you know you are eating this and your body is reacting to it, then stop, please. Stop. For the fact that I can eat, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, watermelon, I can eat, um, some people don't like it. Some people don't like um, pineapple. I was surprised when somebody was telling me if I take um, pineapple, it does this to my stomach. That is you. Individualize it, please. Individualize. If you are taking anything and it's not going well with your system, please don't. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Some of the, just as you say, I just wanted to make a little contribution. Some of the acidic. Uh, fruits like the citrus fruits now they are acidic but it's just that by the time it gets to the body it 
somehow it becomes alkaline, but it could be it could lead to gas. And that's why it's better if you want to take the fruit. Just as you told us, we take it, it takes uh, about 10 minutes. Don't eat food immediately you are taking it. Neither should you eat your food, finish, and, and sit then, down and start licking finish. oranges. <laughs> Take your yes. orange before, before you eat 10 minutes or so before you take the this thing. And for the, uh, the uh, you mentioned pineapple. For the pineapple, if pineapple is not ripe, it's acidic. You, you find that astringency. It's astringent to the taste. You, you, you feel it on your tongue. So it creates, it, it, it also causes acidity within the stomach. And that's why if one wants to take pineapple, it is better you allow it to be, you take a very ripe pineapple. Pineapple is very good. It's very good, but it could be a problem if, you, if it's not the same. And for the, uh, for the melons, the melons too is better when you are taking melons, like watermelon, take it alone. Don't take it with any other thing. It's very beneficial. It is very good. But when you take it with other things, it creates some problems. So it is better you take it alone. It's one of the best fruits you could take. But it could also be problematic when you start combining. Thank you very much. Thank you, Grandma, for that contribution. Yes, very importantly, please. Take your fruit before your food. At least 30, 40 minutes before you take food. And then after eating food, you are adding fruit. You are not getting the maximum benefits from that fruit. Any other question, Bimora? Uh, so at this point, we can only entertain one comment or question. And after that, we move on. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Doctor. Mine is a comment, a contribution um, to the excellent presentation. Um, another thing is physical checkup and um, doing your lab test, lab work. Um, it happened to me because I realized that I like to eat gari, like <laughs> dry gari, like I would eat it and eat it and eat it. Then I went for tests and realized my iron was low. Sometimes we don't know that that's what is causing us to keep doing that. So annual physical checkup um, with the lab, um, check all your labs to see if you're you know, up to par. If not, you need some supplements. So that's just a little question. Thank you. Thank you. I think the regular checkup, please. Take it very, very important. At least once a year, endeavor to do that. All right. Thank you so much, and God bless.
At times we want to run through the protocols, the schedules, and everything, but once in a while, it's also good for us to sort of uh, heal, create some attention to things we think are not needful, some things we relegate, even as children of God, and that's what we've done today. That was an excellent seminar. Can we give the Lord a wonderful <laughs> clap offering? Amen. Amen. And we're trusting God that 
nobody here that listening to that seminar will die before their time. In Jesus' name, amen. There's something about God. If you abuse the privileges, you abuse the vehicle, he will simply recall his spirit and uh, the body will drop there and become dust. And so, don't you never say, don't abuse the privileges. Don't abuse nature. Don't abuse the food. Because it's in abundance. Now, don't live here and say, well, water. I'm going to be drinking, drinking water. You drink and drink and drink, and then you become like a sack. Don't ab tell them, don't abuse the water as well. And our sister talked about alcohol gets absorbed so fast. No wonder when people drink, it dash there, they're knocking down people. <laughs> tell your neighbor, stay away from alcohol. They'd rather be drunk by the Spirit of God. However, we know that if you are a scientist, you know that uh, almost everything contains su sufficient alcohol. The plants, alcohol, methanol, ethanol, propanol, we have all that already. Enough. You don't need to go and abuse. Go, let me go and start uh, fermenting more and adding and all that stuff. That is an abuse of our privileges that God has given to us. Let's pray together. Father, we pray as we look together into your word. We pray that you further give us exposition even within the short time that we have in Jesus' name. We're praying that, Lord, that these lessons, these words will not stand against us at critical times when we want to enjoy our lives, we want to do even more, and then we pray that we will not start we will not experience failures because we're going to adhere to the principles that you've put in place so we can live long and longer in Jesus' name. Give us the grace, give us the strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah, this is a kind of subject we will always visit again and again to even explore and dive even deeper into it. Issues that have to do with holistic health. Quickly before we pray, I want us to look at the subject, the significance of the Passover and Israel's exodus. Significance of the Passover and Israel's exodus. I will share with us uh, just a few verses from Exodus chapter 12. I want us to look at Exodus chapter 12, the significance of Passover and Israel's exodus. Verse 1, the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according a lamb, uh, verse, I read that every man, take every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for one house, verse 4. And if the household be too small or be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. And every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5, everybody read with me. Verse 5, Bible says, your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Praise the Lord. I look at verse, uh, verse, verse 6. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts. On the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat. I read verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Praise the Lord. Now let's finish up with me. And the what? Are you there? Exodus 13. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And... Can I hear everybody say that resoundedly? Can I hear everybody say that as if you're reading with us? And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land, the land of Egypt. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance 
forever. Praise God. We see here these things are not just historical milestones for the Jewish people, but also carry profound theological significance for us today. The Israelites, you know very well, the history had been in Egypt for 430 years, and much of that time was spent in brutal slavery under the Egyptians. God had their cries, remembered his covenant that he had with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now that covenant was extended to this, to the children of Israel in Egypt at this particular time of their lives. God chose Moses to lead his people out of bondage. And we see before the final plague, which was the death, the final plague, which was the death of a firstborn, God instituted this Passover as a means of deliverance for his people. I look at the first point, Passover and its significance to New Testament believers. Passover and its significance to New Testament believers. The lamb, we, use, we see the use of the word, uh, the mention of the lamb in this place. Look at verse 3. The Bible says, speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. This was a commandment of God to select a year-old lamb without blemish. The lamb was to be slaughtered at twilight. The blood of the lamb was to be applied to the doorposts and lintels of their homes. It was an act of of course, obeying this was an act of faith. But it makes sense at that time. It didn't probably make sense to the people at that time. Kill a lamb, put it on the doorpost. We're being oppressed. They always kill a lamb, put it on the doorpost. What does that mean? What scientific evidence does that have? Can you provide evidences, empirical evidences? What has a lamb, Lord, on the doorpost got to do with recovery and deliverance from the plagues? What has it got to do with deliverance? But the things of God are things that the human understanding are shut off, are things that the human mind can comprehend. And if you want to comprehend everything that God has said and God does and wants to do, if you really want to connect with your human brains, you will fall short of his glory. The one thing we know, when God gives divine instruction, when we follow through, we always, of course, it leads to our deliverance. And so, as we pray today, we're trusting God that there'll be some divine injunction for somebody here today in Jesus' name. And you will live here, you'll recover all. If you've been experiencing plagues, sicknesses, uh, as ease in the community in which we're in, God can give you an exemption. I want you to say to yourself, God can give me an exemption. The blood of a lamb served as a sign for God to pass over their homes, sparing them from the plague of death that struck down the firstborn in Egypt. This act was an act of salvation. As we think about this blood, think about the sinless lamb. Think about the, uh, Jesus, the lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. Everything done in the Old Testament was a symbol of what's to, what was to come, of what God was to do for the redemption of humanity. It was an act of salvation to differentiate them from the darkness that was in the land. It was an act of sal salvation to exclude them from the plagues, from the destruction. The angel of death was about to pass through the land. All that the Egyptians saw was an onslaught. People were just dying. And today we've seen many things happen in the world. There are plagues. People are just dying and dying and dying. Some things they can't see. And all you just see people dropping dead, people dying. You know, at that time, maybe that was how it was for the Egyptians. They, they have didn't see the angel of death, an invisible angel of destruction passing through, taking lives. But the children of Israel had an, an instruction to do certain things for them to have a marker and have an identification that will make the angel of death to pass on from, de from them. Today, if you're a child of God, I want to say to you, you have the mark of Christ upon you. I think these people in this column, I say you have the mark of Christ upon you. How about this column? I say you have the mark of Christ upon you. How about this column? You have the mark of Christ upon you. And God will spare you in the name of Jesus Christ. We see also a reference, Exodus 13, we see the mention of the meal. The meal was a feast of unleavened bread. And uh, they were to eat it with the lamb. Uh, the, the lamb was to be roasted and 
eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This meal was to be eaten in a haste without their, with their loins guarded, sandals on their feet and staff in their hand. And these actions signify their readiness to depart. Look at that. Uh, if you look at Exodus chapter 13, let's look at Exodus 13 verse 3. And you can read down this. We read through some of this. If you study the STS verse 3, Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. And there shall no leaven bread be eaten. This day came ye out in the month of Abib. This was, you know, during the Passover. And, says, and it shall be where they were having a memorial of what had happened. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee out of the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hevites and the Jebusites, which he swore unto thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, and thou shalt keep this service in this month. This is post um, record now. And look at verse 6. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Verse 8, and thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt, and it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand, for a memorial between thy eyes, and the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand, can I hear say strong hand? With a strong hand had the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in this season from year to year. Verse 11, I shall come, it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore unto thee as unto their fathers, and shall give it to thee, thou shall, that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix, even the firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast. The males shall be the Lord's, and every firstling of an ass Thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck, and all the firstborn of man among the children thou shalt redeem. And we see here this continuation, the memorial, the repetition of this to remind them of exactly what was done when they were in, in Egypt. And let's look at the other aspect of this, the consecration aspect of the firstborn. Exodus chapter 13, verse 1, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of a beast, it is mine. And now if you remember what happened in Egypt, the angel of death came and took all the firstborn, just slew all the firstborn, and they were, by the morning, they were all gone. And God's saying, look, let your firstborn be consecrated unto me. And when we look at the scriptures, we see it's as symbolic as uh, symbolic to giving God the first place of our heart, the first place of our time, the first place of our energy, the first place of our of, of our of all our labor. And uh, that will not permit us to dig deeply into this. Let's look at uh, I'll look at Exodus chapter. Uh, let's look at Exodus chapter 13, verse 11. Again, Exodus 13, and shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaan, as he swore unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give thee that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix. It will be for the Lord. And every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the males shall be the Lord's. The Lord is saying, Give me the first place, give me the firstling, give me the firstborn, give me the firstborn of the humans, give me the firstborn of the animals, they will be mine, for I redeem you because of the redemption that they experienced in, in Egypt. We see the firstborn of unclean animals and human children were to be redeemed with a lamb. The practice underscore the principles of substitutionary sacrifice, foreshadowing the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Let's quickly look at the second point, Passover and its symbol of spiritual and uh, a symbol of spiritual and physical bondage. Passover and its symbol of sp deliverance of spiritual and physical bondage. Passover and its symbol of deliverance from spiritual and physical bondage. Let's look at that place again, Exodus chapter 12. We look at verse 29. And it came to pass. 
that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh and sat the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the cattle we see here no one was exempt that was not in that covenant relationship with God but not only being in that covenant relationship with God but also adhering obediently doing